tonight on Live with Cordon and Kilgore. Culture journalist and guidebook author, Seth Kuberski. Right now on Live with Cordon and Kilgore. Yes, hello, and welcome to Live with Cordon and Kilgore. Thank you for joining us. I'm Natalie Cordon. <laughs> hello, everyone. I'm Sean Kilgore. It is Monday, July 5th, and this is episode 20 of Live with Cordon and Kilgore with our very special guest, Mr. Seth Kuberski. We're very excited to have him here with us today. Yeah, we we are thrilled. And we yeah, also yeah. want to welcome all of you, whether you're listening to the audio podcast or if you're joining us live as we are streaming on the Cordon and Kilgore YouTube channel and the Facebook page. So you can find us on all these pages through the magic of StreamYard. Now, if you're joining us tonight on Facebook, as always, please invite your friends to come along by sharing this live stream. You'll start by selecting share from the bottom of your screen. You can see that big, huge arrow on the left. Then hit write a post on the left. And finally, type a message to invite your friends to join us and hit that blue post button. And if you haven't yet, make sure that you've liked us um, by going to Cordone and Kilgore on Facebook and tapping the little thumbs up like button to keep up with the latest Cordone and Kilgore news. Now, if you're sharing and joining us on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, which is, of course, Cordone and Kilgore. Now, if you're watching us live, please comment, ask questions in the chat. We want to know that you're here. And as always, we'll do our best to respond to as many of them as possible. We are so excited to be back because I know we were gone for the last two weeks while we were off doing things. Oh, speaking of, you guys are happy yeah. to see the deck too. So that's always great. Hi, yes, love. Hello, Wade. Oh, hi, Wade. Yeah. Hey, Dawn. Forgot it, it was Monday. Here we are. Yeah. No, it is Monday. It doesn't feel like Monday, though, because it's the holiday weekend. It does. This was still enjoying this bit of a extended uh, long weekend. It's been really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it has yeah. been good. It's funny to me. So for the first time, I'm not spending the 4th of July with my aunt. My mom was just on here. Um, but my aunt, it, her birthday is the 4th of July, which I can't imagine anything more exciting than as a kid having like fireworks go off everywhere around the country for you your think birthday. it's for you it's like having your birthday yeah. on christmas right i would think that that'd yeah. be pretty pretty great so we always celebrate with her but this year i have a gig and it's not near her so we for the first time are not around for her fourth of july birthday but it does feel very weird because we usually have this big birthday party on the fourth of july oh and that's my grandmother who was giving birth on the 4th of July. Now that had to feel like a different kind of fireworks. Well, congratulations to, to, to her. That's... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. So, so how, yeah, how have your last couple of weeks been since I saw you? Uh, it's been pretty awesome. I mean, I definitely coming off of the, uh, the adrenaline rush of getting to be back on stage for the first time again, yeah. uh, which was awesome. And it's so crazy that now we have another bit of time before we, before we get back. Um, speaking of Joe Furlow joining Yay! us right now, of course, hey, he's the one that brought us out to, uh, to Oshkosh there. <laughs> way to check yeah, in, way grandma. to check in, grandma. Awesome. That's right. My grandmother, <laughs> by the way, just had her 92nd birthday. Oh, and she is birthday. not only just on Facebook, she's also on Instagram and she's commenting. So I'm just saying, lots of time amazing. for everybody to get That's out there and do stuff. That's a, a tech savvy right. grandma, tech savvy grandma, right? There. Tech savvy grandma. Did I just see that there was a hello from Faith and Don? We're so glad there you guys was. are back too. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us back here, everybody. So yeah, for so sure. um. Yeah, so it feels weird to now. Now we, of course, we have till January before we get to to do it again, unless something else happens in between now and then. But could very well happen. Could, could very, well, very happen. well happen. Yeah, so but other there's than a lot. That, it's been, been a lot um, going on. It's, it's been a good couple of weeks. Tell us about your uh, couple of weeks. Okay, I will, but I want to put on hold that we have to talk about the fact that it was also your birthday weekend this past oh. week. Thank you. I mean, we're just talking about birthdays. I expected you to bring it up, but since you didn't, I will do it <laughs> for you. So Thanks. for everyone who didn't know, uh, Sean's birthday was just, and I won't say which one, was 18th birthday, of it, course, yeah, was yeah. just Look a couple this. of days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Asian, Asian, like <laughs> nobody's business. So anyway, so his birthday was on the second. So we want to all wish him a big, huge, happy birthday as well. So I don't want to leave, uh, leave our, our birthday weekend talk. Um, but so for me, this past week was, or week before, not this week, was super exciting. I went and shot a TV show. Um, I can't talk about which one, but I was on set and we did in fact, you know, film. It was incredible and I loved it. It was in Atlanta um, and the set was very glamorous and there was a lot going on. It was a big scene um, and it was with the, the main characters from the show. So hopefully, I'll get to announce it sometime soon and then we can all like watch it together when it when it comes yes, out. Yes. We'll cannot we'll wait. I'm so happy for yeah. you and so Thanks. thrilled and I can't I can't wait to uh to see the outcome. Me too. <laughs> Sean has 18-year-old <laughs> socks. That's, that's probably I can't. true. And I think he's taking them on the road with us. And we, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a give just a little hint of how we do on the road. I have actually come to the point where I have almost started packing a pair of black socks for Sean because he <laughs> forgot to bring them to so many gigs along the way. And he'd be like, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, well, you got to wear what you got on. <laughs> so I think you should start wearing fancy socks, fancy 18 year old socks. <laughs> All right. I'm up like, for anything. Oh, hi, Eileen. Hi, Mama. Hello, Ooh, and, Mama Wilson. Oh, so many good friends Excellent. here. So glad yeah. to see everybody. Good. So, so what else? So what did you do then, yesterday? I mean, how did you uh, cel how did you actually celebrate the fourth then? I celebrated yesterday by working almost all day. Um, no, I you? also have one more project coming up that I can't actually officially talk about yet. Um, but it's a really big theater show that's coming up in September, and it requires a lot of line learning. And so I spent yesterday almost all day going over my lines. So that, that was a happy 4th of July to me. <laughs> nice. It was, it was pretty good. It? it was a good way to spend the day. Feeling pretty good about it? I think point? so, yeah. yeah. I, I think petrified would be the, the, the word that I would use about it is terrified, um, but in the best way possible. I'm definitely stretching and growing with it and, um, and feeling, feeling really good. Like I, I love the show. I love the fact that I'm getting to do it. Um, but it is, it is a lot to take. So on. for everyone out there just needs to stay tuned because pretty, very, very soon we'll be able to have some pretty exciting news on the Natalie yeah. front, right? Yeah, it's good. That one I should be able to announce like in the next couple of weeks, I think week yeah. or two. So Perfect. yeah, it's good. Hey, do you want to talk coming. a little bit about, um, the, the guests that we have that you've lined up, um, uh, coming Oh up? my gosh. I absolutely do. So this guest that we have lined up for today, Seth Kuberski, I have actually known longer than I've known Sean, which is telling you something. We did a show a long, long, long time together, a long time ago together, which we'll talk a little tiny bit about tonight. But he's also worked for 20 years as a travel journalist, arts and culture critic, event producer, theatrical director, stage technician, performer, you name it. Seth has done it all along the East Coast and across the United States. He's a contributor to several top selling guidebooks and nationally recognized as an author, as an authority on theme parks and amusement attractions. And we can read Seth's coverage of Orlando arts and entertainment scene in his column, Live Active Cultures in the Orlando Weekly every week. So please welcome my very good friend, Seth Kuberski. <laughs> I have always wanted to see my name in lights like that. Thank you for making the dream come true, even if it's only in CGI. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for an amazing introduction. It is always good to get to talk to you, Natalie, uh, and Sean, of course, too. But yeah, Natalie and I go back uh, an embarrassing long way. I don't want to admit how long, but that I did not is have correct. quite so much gray hair when we met. Um, Neither did I. <laughs> I had more gray hair when we met than you have right now. <laughs> mm. And I but... had about the same amount of gray hair. I just covered it up. So we, we've, <laughs> we've switched. We're, we're just all in, in the money. We're just we'll letting it all days. hang out at this point. Letting it all hang out. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me on. This is really exciting. Oh, Thank my goodness. We are so happy to have you. I am so proud of the fact that 
you have done so much for the arts and entertainment here in this area and certainly all around the country. And to know you and your amazing, just like happy go lucky spirit has been always a joy. I'm always you, excited you to are have you around. Definitely the first person to ever describe me as happy go lucky. My <laughs> wife will laugh so hard when she hears well, that. Thank I you mean, so when it, much. <laughs> when it comes to people who you know are always gonna have like a good positive outlook on the way things could go down, you're one of them. And that's well, not always true. Of I, I everyone, think that so is mostly that is mostly because if I am in your presence, uh, one, one, the, whatever the show or the project is probably going to go pretty well. Uh, and two, uh, your positive spirit is definitely infectious uh, because I, I, I'll I, pretend that that's I think it. there are more people who would call me cynical or grumpy than happy go lucky, but I'll take it. Who are you. these people? I, I would I would go to the mat any day to say that they are wrong, that they are it's, they are a bad influence. <laughs> Oh, well, talking about really great shows that are out there, I was lucky enough to run into you. Uh, Kevin oh. Kelly, our very good friend who's also been on the show, debuted his new show oh a couple my of God, weeks that ago. Was and yeah. it was so good. And it was the first time that I've been out in like a theatrical situation in mm -hmm. a year and a half. It's been forever. So getting to see so many, like, you know, again, sort of local A-listers here in Orlando was amazing. And it, getting it to see really you there was a highlight. Uh, yeah, all, all the it cool very kids much was. there. <laughs> and, it, you know, I, I have been, um, you know, I was at the Fringe uh, uh, and I've been going to theme parks and seeing shows there. But that night that you're talking about was the first time that I'd been like in an intimate venue with like a cabaret style you know, thing having not wearing a mask, not having the person on stage wearing a mask. Um, it was the closest thing to normal uh, that we'd had in a really long time. So that, that was yeah, that was a pretty special evening. Um, it plus, was amazing. Kevin is such a great performer. Um, you know, so that made that it certainly special. helps. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry that I missed that, that I wasn't able to be there for that. But Seth, you also are uh, the author of Keen Communications, the uh, unofficial guide to Universal Orlando yes, Resort. You, you, you co. You can, you can see them. Oh, I can't. I can never point because it's mirrored, but you can see them in the background behind me. Oh, uh, nice. My, my little shelf of books. Yeah. Right now, I am. Uh, I should be furiously working on uh, my Disneyland guidebook for 2022. Uh, because I'm off to Disneyland to do my final uh, research checks uh, for the book. Um, it could, you know, it was really weird. Uh, they've been publishing a Disneyland book since I was a kid, uh, this company, and I hooked up with them uh, about 10 years ago um, and started taking over some of the books from the original author. Uh, so we're co-authors now. Um, wow. But uh, the Disneyland book, we ended up not doing a 2021 book for the first time since uh, they started publishing them in the late 80s mm -hmm. um, because you can't write a, a book about a place that's closed for a solid year. So I'm so excited to uh, head back to Disneyland uh, uh, in less than a week <laughs> and then uh, write a book wow. in less than a month. So. <laughs> Excellent. And so you you also co-authored those guides for uh, Las Vegas and for... Yeah, we've got for... a whole series under the unofficial guides. Um, I work on the Las Vegas book, um, which uh, I am not a gambler. So uh, anything in there about playing cards uh, is not for me. But I cover all of the attractions and the shows out there. Uh, very excited to be heading back to Vegas and seeing the shows coming back to life there. Um, plus, here in Orlando, I have a Universal Orlando guidebook, and I contribute to our Walt Disney World guidebook. So, pretty much, if there's a theme park uh, on, you know, either the east or the west coast, you want you're interested in, come talk to me. Excellent. And so, um, so being such a you know so knowledgeable on uh, on the the industry, the themed entertainment industry, uh, and particularly here in Orlando, uh, is there anything for those of us who haven't left our house in a, in a while? Uh, is is there anything new that that we might need to see that's new and exciting Ooh. that you're really excited about? Um, yeah, you know, it, it's interesting how uh, the parks have we're kind of in a little bit of a holding um, pattern when uh, things first reopened but there were a lot of social distancing changes and uh, a lot of safety measures and every everyone was kind of a little tentative uh now the floodgates are open um you know they're back to work on the new epic universe uh, park which is the new theme park that universal is building disney's got a whole bunch of stuff that it's all kind of going to open on october 1st which is their 50th anniversary um lately the thing that's been uh uh keeping me going back to the parks over and over again is the velocicoaster that universal opened uh, about nice. a month
month or so ago. I think I've been on it like 26, 27 times, <laughs> oh, and it just does not get, I, I don't get tired of it. Um, I could ride that coaster for the rest of my life very happily. I love that. That is yeah. awesome. And then, so other than that, in, in, in the things that have been existing mm -hmm. for a while, other than the things that are new, what, what is, would you say is your favorite, uh, your favorite attraction? Oh, I mean, that's like asking to, to pick between children. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I have my, my longtime favorites, like, um, the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, especially the, the pirates out in California. Um, those, those are kind of classics that, that will never get old to me. Um, I'd say if, if I have one that has stuck with me over the last 20 years that, that I'd probably ridden more times than anything else in the world, it's, uh, the Spider-Man ride at Islands of Adventure. Okay. Uh, it's still, you know, 20 years old and still hard to top. Excellent. Thank you. Very nice. So out of the things that are open and we, if we are just now emerging from our own cocoons <laughs> right here sure. in the quarantine, is there anything that you would say is your go-to, like you must get out and see these things? Like what, what's coming up that you know of that we don't know? What's, what's going on? Ooh, um, well, like I mentioned, uh, you know, Disney World is celebrating their 50th anniversary starting October 1st. Um, and right now is kind of a crazy time to be in the theme parks uh, because the guests have come back. The, get, the parks are packed, but the staffing really hasn't come back yet. Uh, mm. They're desperately trying to hire thousands of people, especially in food and beverage. Um, so if I would say if you're going to the parks right now, pack a lunch. Don't go hungry because mm. uh, you're going to wait an hour for a corn dog. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think I think this fall i'm really hoping that by this fall uh things are going to settle down a little bit more um you know whatever cons uh, constrictions for social distancing will probably be completely gone even though mm. they're like 90 percent gone now and hopefully um a lot of the talent will be back at work uh the one thing that's really still hurting especially the disney parks is out of their you know almost 800 union actors at Disney, uh, I think there's still almost 700 who are still out of work. Wow. Um, and if to me, the theme parks, especially the Disney parks, are not what they are, uh, not what they charge hundreds of dollars for without the live without entertainment. That, uh, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's, you can build a roller coaster anywhere, uh, but, you know, you can only have these kind of people who have been skilled at, at improv and uh, skilled at uh, interacting with crowds. Um, and been doing it for decades. Um, and so I, I'm not going to be really happy telling people to go back to the parks until all those people are back at work. We love you for that. Mm -hmm. We love you yep, saying that. Much. Thank yeah. you for honoring all those people that have put yep. in so much time building a real craft that mm -hmm. has brought joy to millions of people all around the world. And we yep. can't wait to see them all go back to work. Um, so before we close this up on you, I just want to let everybody to know Over where already? they can I find. I like just getting started. <laughs> I know, I know, but we're not going to let you go quite yet. Oh, um, okay. But in case anybody wants to find uh, where they can get your, your books or your information, Absolutely. where's the best place for them to find, find you? Best place to start is theunofficialguides.com. Uh, we've got a store on there and you can uh, order all the books. Um, and if you want to follow me on social media, my personal account is at S-K-U-B-E-R-S-K-Y, S. Um okay. But I am on uh, Instagram uh, for the books at The Unofficial Guides. Um, so if you, you just do a search in whatever your social media for The Unofficial Guides and you'll find me. Great. Excellent. And Anyone who's based here in Orlando, they can also look for you in the weekly as well, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, even if you are not here to pick up a physical copy of the weekly, which is free from newsstands all around downtown, uh, but you can also find that online every week at orlandoweekly.com. Amazing. Good, good, good. Well, I know that you feel like we're just getting started, but before we let you go, each week we like to take a moment to get to know you a little bit better and also our audience. I'm so nervous. this is a segment I, you, you should be. It's going to be very difficult. It's Alex Trebek worthy. Um, in a segment we call Getting to Know You. So it is a series of questions that are randomly pulled from a deck of cards, which are called pod decks. 
who is our okay. first official sponsor for the show. So now it's time for Getting to Know You, powered by Poddex. This edition of Getting to Know You is powered by Poddex, the hottest new tool for podcasters and can make for a fun night at home, too. Simply shuffle up, ask a question, and let the good times roll. Check out poddex.com and use code GOODVIBES for 10% off your order. All righty, here we go. So it is getting okay. to know you. Here we go with question number one. Question number one. Question Let's number one. Okay. <laughs> what is, uh, and so, and as always, everybody out there uh, joining us, please give us your answers in the chat. Uh, and let us know uh, what, what you think about these questions also. Yeah. All right. So yeah. uh, what is the most important thing that you carry with you all of the time? That's probably the um, same for I, I I hate to say it, but it's probably my iPhone. That's terrible. Um, I wouldn't have said that 20, 20 years ago. I would have said a photograph of my loved ones in my wallet. But <laughs> no, <laughs> my iPhone. Sorry. It has all the photographs well, there's of pictures. your loved ones. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Everything, yeah. everything that I could have carried. I mean, it, you know, even even I don't even need my ID anymore. It's all in my Apple wallet. No. So I don't... Yeah, I do. Yep. Same here. Yeah, right, that's so probably the same for... The... Can we put the phone as like a blanket? We all agree yes. that it's the yeah. phone. Yeah. Can we have that be like a gimme and then see what else it would be? Is there anything yeah. else? Well, we do yeah, have. I oh. mean, oh, that I would carry all the time, uh, you know, I guess um, my medical insurance card in my in my wallet because it took a long time to get one of those. Um, <laughs> first of all, thank you, Obamacare, because uh, <laughs> I went a good 10 years without medical insurance. Wow, and then, um, that's scary. And I, actually, I, I finally got Obamacare and was loving it. And then I got a, a real job that offered health insurance so I could no longer have Obamacare. And I, I got to tell you, I, I, I paid less for more uh, under Obamacare. <laughs> so maybe I'll, I can get fired. I don't know. I don't know that, that's a good <laughs> Everybody solution. else did last year. I don't know yeah. how you're the only one who managed <laughs> I know, I am, I am very No, I am very, very grateful to uh, to be employed. and uh, Of course. And any extra health care premiums are worth it. <laughs> yeah, so Sean, absolutely. what do you carry on you all the time? Oh, Kleenex. That's mm. a good one. Kleenex that's a good and, one. And then your mom's well, EpiPen. And my mom's yeah. EpiPen. Yeah. That is yeah. that's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. Sean, what do you carry on you all the time? Oh, other man, than your phone? I don't know. I, yeah, other than my phone, I really don't know because that is pretty much what I I mean, I carry a water bottle. That's probably that's pretty important. I, you know. That's a good one. To, yeah, stay hydrated. That's something I carry all the time. Hydration's important. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, whatever it is, you end up putting in my purse, whatever it is that you're carrying. All that's very I true. Know what it that's is. very true. Yeah. <laughs> Anything my, that my I'm wife's this... driver's license. That's the most important <laughs> thing. Yes. And her yeah. lipstick. Yeah. yeah. Anything I have my... is the, 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 I have nowhere to put ends up in Natalie's purse. Every time. Every time. Yeah. Um, I mine is chapstick. Oh. oh my god she just no said it too. Way. that's crazy oh gloria rice i love <laughs> you so much yes chapstick 100 percent. oh glasses glasses that's a good one too yeah. that's a good one yeah 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 oh, for driver's sure license. Yeah. driver's license and now oh, yeah. i have the, my driver's license attached to the back of my phone like i have i have a pop socket wallet mm -hmm. that has my two credit cards and my license in there that's so really, if you steal that everything's gone getting to the point where the phone is really all you all you're gonna need moving yeah. forward yeah. you know yeah. Well, yeah. I know. now that you have your vaccine you've got the 5g in your blood so you can just <laughs> that's right tap your that's forehead right. against the scanner and you'll be fine <laughs> and you're magnetic hysterical yeah. that that's was right. the other I one that i liked on the cdc website there. was like you are not <laughs> magnetic <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> Magnetos running all over the place. Uh, all right, here we go. Question number two. <laughs> Question since number two. We're, since we're coming off of the uh, off of the holiday weekend, and a lot of people spent time outside. If you were able to, with the weather, this is a, a beach themed question. Ooh. So, uh, when at the beach, are you more likely to build a sandcastle or bury someone in the sand, or 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 be buried yourself? Uh, those are both a lot of work. When I am at the beach, <laughs> I'm most likely to be. Uh, sitting in in a chair covered by an umbrella probably dressed head to toe uh to avoid burning um with a hat on um, <laughs> and watching my wife swim in the ocean from a distance that's that's what I'm that's doing. that's how it goes down for you uh, yes i yeah. might be burying my own feet in the sand that's about oh there you go okay that's cool yes. yeah that's good. natalie what about you um i too i mine looks very much like <laughs> seth's actually where i I'm not a huge beach person, but um, I too am like, mine would be either reading a book or 
Marriott Booth, who was also one of our guests, will tell you because she's gone like she went to Cancun with us at one point. We we did like a, a couple's fun weekend. And um, and I worked the entire time. I had music on and like I was learning a, a show the whole time I was there. And that made me infinitely happy. Like I couldn't have been happier sitting on the beach, like learning shows. So, yeah. So I guess I, too, would be more likely to bury my own head in the sand about the fact that I'm there. Does that count as, a, <laughs> as an answer? How about, yeah, and I missed good. those things you popped up just now. What What are people saying? Uh, sand castle if I can build it under the umbrella. Mm -hmm. which is I'm with yeah. you there. I'm with you there. Yeah. yeah. Then, See? See? Yep. It is yeah, true. I mean, it. it's this, the sun is brutal anymore, especially like, you know, I just went for a walk today and it was, I mean, at three o'clock in the afternoon, like blazing, oh. blazing hot. And so, but I, I love the beach. I'm a big beach person. So if I am there, but it's very similar to what, to what you guys said, we, we usually set up like a 10 by 10 tent and, you know, I do, uh, I do like to, you know, go in the water and, you know, so I'll be back and forth. We'll have music on and, um, you know, maybe a, some white claws or some, you know, cocktails of some kind. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day that said the beastie boys did not fight for your right to party. So you could drink white claw. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good <laughs> okay so I, white claw is that the one that is seltzer it's like hard it seltzer is, uh, it is today's zima yeah but exactly okay, all right. exactly that we yeah. that we all is, remember is, thank it is, god it is the new generation zima <laughs> yeah so i and have a generation whole... has to discover their, their yes own. Yeah. I have a very short story about White Claw in that, my, so, you know, my grandmother who was on here, it's not her, but my grandfather who just turned 90 a couple of weeks ago. Happy birthday again, grandpa. We were at a party before COVID hit and um, he was drinking what he thought was seltzer water the whole time. People kept bringing it to him and it turned out to be White Claw. So grandpa was kind of wasted. Great little, little buzz. He had a great party. He had a really good time buzz. at this party though. Just didn't, didn't know why. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, so make sure you let people know what you're handing them. Yeah. If they're Thankfully, 90 and they've never The alcohol content's off. pretty low in there. And, you know, true, true. Yeah, He's, he but, seemed to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we, when you're right. 90, we'll see how many you can pick, pick back and still <laughs> Be That's true. true. Listen, challenge accepted. I, I'll be. Uh... <laughs> we'll come back on Sean's. We had Sean's birthday this weekend, so we'll yeah. come back when he's ninety, and we'll right. do yeah. this all over again. So another seventy-two years. <laughs> right. Exactly. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Another yeah. seventy-two years. We'll all be virtually <laughs> teleporting into each other's living rooms by then. <laughs> yeah. all, all right. right. Question right. number three. Here we go. Question number if three. You could instantly learn another language. Which language would you pick, or do you speak another language? Um, hmm. I vaguely understand a little bit of Spanish, uh, and a little bit of French, um, enough to get by when I travel, but, uh, not enough to not embarrass myself. Um, so, um, you know, I, I guess it would probably be, uh, most useful if I could, uh, be fluent in Spanish, um. But uh, I also think uh, Mandarin would probably be a good choice. Ten good ten years from now, that might that might be uh, very useful. Really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would think I would think Spanish also Spanish or Portuguese yeah. for just where we live. I think it'd be incredibly useful, definitely in in in, in my work also, um, to be able to communicate better in that way. Yeah. We have some people saying Italian. Would like to learn Greek. That's cool. Greek. Ooh, Greek that is good. Me. <laughs> ah, yes. What about yes, you, Natalie? Yes. Uh, Italian, hands down. Like, yeah. I took it in college and I was getting to the point where I could sort of understand. Like, I was in Italy and I could understand what they were talking about, but like conjuring the sentences together didn't go terribly well for me. And I wish I just stuck with it. So that would be that would be the one for me. It, it wouldn't cool. necessarily be the most helpful, but it would be the one that I would pick, hands down. Excellent. Well, that concludes yeah. this edition of Getting to Know You, I Seth. Mean, Thanks so I much for playing. Did I answer correctly? Did you I win? Did. You did. Valuable yes. prizes? Yes. You I won a lifetime supply prizes. of rice the San Francisco treat. <laughs> and some turtle wax. Yep. And some turtle wax. I was turtle promised wax. turtle wax. <laughs> <laughs> and by that, we mean you're going to have to go in your front yard here in Florida and find a turtle. <laughs> Good luck. They are all over. That's easy. They are all over. Oh, my goodness. That was so much fun. We loved having you here, Seth. We can't thank you enough. When for... you run out of interesting guests, you call me and we'll do this again. Hey, if you're willing, we will call you again we'll you very anytime. soon. And anytime. I mean, we, we didn't dish it all on theater. Uh, I mean, we, we've got plenty of ground that we could cover. We sure do. Absolutely. And, Knowing that this 50th anniversary of Disney's coming up, I know you're going to oh, be I'm, super busy. I'm always uh, willing to but... come back and talk to you. 
I will but make sure maybe we can steal you sometime around there because I think people would be very interested in what's going on and what's changing and things in your industry are changing yep. just as fast as they are for us, obviously. So we want to hear about what's new, fresh and different. Yeah, absolutely. I think the next uh, year or two, we're going to see a crazy, the pent up demand and uh, people bringing out new projects to capitalize. And I think it's going to be a really exciting time. Yeah, we agree. So again, thanks for joining us tonight. And you can always find Seth's recommendations on art and entertainment in his column, Live Active Cultures, which is featured in each issue of the Orlando Weekly. Or you can pick up his guides uh, wherever you find your his wherever you find your books. Available in fine yeah. bookstores, wherever Oops. fine bookstores still exist. Where, <laughs> wherever fine books are still sold. <laughs> you can pick one up and put it inside your Kindle. Um, so we appreciate you taking the time to join us, whether, of course, it was live or you're watching later in the week. Um, Thank you so much. And don't forget to ring the bell if you have not yet um, to make sure that you're the first to know when we go live. You'll do that right there in Facebook. Um, now, we're going to leave you with a look at our return to the stage just a few weeks ago at the Grand Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. This is the opening sequence from our new version of the start of something big, the music of Steve and Edie. Now, we'll see you again next week when our guests will be the singing duo of Courtney and Dustin Cunningham. We'll see you then. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks, Seth. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the start of something big. The music of Steve, Steve and, and Edie. Edie. You're walking along the street or you're at a party. Or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig You're looking in someone's eyes You suddenly realize That this could be the start of something big You're lunching at 21 And watching your diet girl Declining a Charlotte Bruce Accepting a big, 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 When out of a clear blue sky It's suddenly gal and guy this could be the start of something big There's no controlling the unrolling of your fate, my friend Who knows what's written in the magic book But when a lover you discover at the gate, my friend Invite her in without a second book You're up in an aeroplane Or dining at Sardis, yeah. Or lying in Malibu alone on the sand start of something grand <laughs> picture it america the 1950s 60s and 70s that's right when our televisions had only 12 channels to choose from and it seemed like only three of them actually broadcast People had to get up and adjust their rabbit ear antennas to just the right positions. While others scurried up to their rooftops to adjust their aerial antennas to get the best picture. But when the TV was finally warmed up and the picture settled in... It was magic. We were watching classically entertaining and hysterical variety shows with superstar hosts like Ed Sullivan, Dinah Shore, Dean Martin, and Carol Burnett. And almost everything was live. In 1953, the institution we now know as The Tonight Show had just begun its five-night-a-week schedule. And that's where, for the first time, we would meet the artists we pay tribute to tonight. America became obsessed in a 1950s Kardashian kind of way with the two young regular singers on the show. Sidney Leibowitz or Steve Lawrence. And Edith Gormanzano or Edie Gourmet. <laughs> Before paparazzi were paparazzi, the two were wed in 1957 in the most widely publicized wedding America had ever seen. And that, of course, was the start of something big. 93 albums, 12 Emmys, two Grammys, and countless performances for eager television and nightclub audiences catapulted these two young and in love stars to fame. Their numerous television appearances brought a level of style, quality, and showmanship to the small screen that the world has not seen since. Younger generations might identify with them as the parents of David Lawrence, composer of Disney's high school musical movies, but back then they were simply known as Steve, Steve and, and Edie. Edie. <laughs> this could be 
the start of something very big. Why don't you play your part? Please give your heart to me and see. All right, come on. This could be the start of something wonderful. Why don't you take a chance? Just try romance with me and see. Must be the start of something. This could be the heart of something. This could be the start of something. Big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. That's good to be back. Oh, here good. we are. We